Hello and welcome to the 31st video in this tutorial series for programming in C. So we started in the last video to take a little bit of a diversion from the normal learning thing, new things in C to actually implement some of the stuff that's been learnt and start making a tic-tac-toe game. And you'll remember, or hopefully you'll still have the code from the last video which you can download, which looked like this and was the skeleton very much, very much start of the tic-tac-toe program. And if I compile and run, you'll remember that it basically just printed a board out to the screen using numbers to represent the noughts and the crosses, which were defined up here as constants. And I set here the board to crosses. So I'm going to delete that line here now and just compile and run again to make sure everything's OK. And now we're going to make a few changes to the constants and things uh, before we start actually programming. So I'll leave this board 25 array up here because we're still going to work with this um, schematic or this, this way of working where we use the border squares around the squares we're interested in and simply use this array here to convert between the two. And I explained that in the previous video. We're going to introduce in this video something called enumerated constants. And we're going to replace these four constants, noughts, crosses, border, empty, like so. And when you enumerate constants like this, it has exactly the same effect as what we've just seen de de declaring the integer constants. But, and this will declare, they start at zero, so noughts is zero, crosses is one, border is two, and empty is three. And then I've got another set of constants here saying human win is naught, a computer win is one, and a draw is 2. Now if I wanted it to be different, I could say a human win, for instance, is 4. And if I left it like this, it would make a computer win 5 and a draw 6. And if I made the computer win 10, it would then make the draw 11. So I'm sure you get the idea how this works. And it's just a much more convenient way of defining constants and listing every one individually as an integer. So it's a bit of a cleaner and less code-intensive way of doing it. So that's the first thing, because we're going to need of course for the board our noughts crosses border and empty but we're also going to need our human win, computer wins or draw. So the next thing is to go down to the main function and think about how we're going to do things. Well obviously the game's going to run in a loop and we're basically going to keep looping and receiving moves until either the game is won or it's drawn and there are no more moves. So we'll make a void function and we'll call it run game. And we'll actually run the game inside this function rather than running it in the main function. And we'll actually call this from the main function. So let's delete now the code that we've got in the main function here. And the first thing we want to do is call our run game. There's something we actually have to do before we call run game. And let's go back up to the top of the file and include stdlib.h. And also include string.h. And now what we want to do is actually, as we've done in one of the tutorial videos, just seed our random number generator. Because we're going to be using, eventually when we're generating the computer moves, the, uh, the moves at first randomly. We'll do it with some AI after that, but for the... Uh, foreseeable future, just to get the game working when we've programmed it, we'll be generating the moves on the board randomly. So we've seeded our random numbers, so they're not the same each time we run the program, and now we've called our run game function. And now we have to think about how the game is actually going to run, and I've already prepared some things here to make this go a little bit quicker, but I've got some variables declared here. I've got a game over that'll be set to 1 if the game is over, the side to move is set to noughts, and that will be the human side. The last move made is recorded in here. And we've also got, obviously, our board here. And then, as you already seen in the previous video, we initialize the board to the normal starting state, and then print the board. And we'll be changing the print board function as well, so it actually prints out noughts and crosses rather than numbers. So the next thing to think of is our game is basically going to continuously run then while game over is zero. So while not game over. So while the game is not over, 
the game is going to run. And now if we, I've written out here really sort of a skeleton definition of then how the game will run inside this while loop. So if the side is naught, which is the human, then we need to get a move from the human, make that move on the board, and change the side to crosses. And if it's the computer, oh, we need to get the move from the computer, make it the computer's move on the board, and likewise change the side. And after the computer has moved, we'll then print the board out, because then, assuming the game isn't won or drawn, we'll come into the next loop and ask the human to enter a move, so they need to be able to say, see the current state of the board. When either side has made a move, we'll check if three in a row exists. If it does, then the game is over, and whichever side is now not to move is the winner. And if there are no legal moves, so no empty squares left on the board, then the game is declared a draw. And in this case, or game over case, obviously, we then break out of the while loop because we'll set game over to 1. OK then, so that's it for this video. That's the skeleton of our game running. I'll just check and see if that compiles or I've missed anything. Nope, seems to compile and prints our board to the screen and doesn't do anything else. It's obviously running now in an influ inf infinite uh, while loop. So everything's set up now and in the next video we'll start implementing some of these functions starting with the print board function. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.